Hello and welcome to the Vaults of Terror. My name is Ed and today we're going to be having a look at the hive world of Necromunda. It's a world filled with industry and violence, and it's a hive world within the Segmentum Solar, the same Segmentum as the Holy Terror itself. Officially, this overpopulated hive world is known for its industry, producing munitions for Imperial Guard regiments across the galaxy, including lasguns, autoguns, shotguns, and even bolt guns. The planet, thanks to its massive population, is also a major levy site for Imperial Guard regiments, including the notable Necromundan Spiders. They also manufacture other supplies for the Guard regiments, but their munitions exports are their primary industry. Unofficially, Necromunda is rife with violence, not between the enemies of the Imperium, but between rival hive gangs, many of whom fight for dominance in the city's extensive underhive, fighting with a brutality almost unrivaled across other hives of the galaxy. The planet was colonised over 15,000 years ago as a mining and manufacturing world, and had previously been part of the Aranius Continuity, a small empire of humans ruled by a techno-nobility. During the Great Crusade, the continuity was defeated and an Orc presence was forced out by the Imperial Fists Legion, led by Rorgal Dawn, establishing close ties between the world and the eventual chapter. Over the last 10,000 years, the planet's purpose has hardly changed. It is a world of mines, factories, refineries and processing plants. The planet is a vast powerhouse of industry, making thousands and thousands of different objects for use both on Necromunda and throughout the Segmentum. The world has been utterly plundered by humanity. From its heights to its depths, no inch of the world has been left untouched. All the world's resources have been ripped out, almost all the mineral wealth is gone, the land is a waste, the ocean's pools of toxic sludge. Humans occupy vast hive cities miles high and tens of miles across, and are very typical of the hive cities found across the Imperium. At their peak, the rich and wealthy live in luxury, far above the poisonous fog and the miserable masses toiling in the city far below. Some hives tend to group together, forming hive clusters, a complex of peaks and towers that spread over massive areas. Between the hives stand massive deserts of ash and pollution, the tainted smog clinging close to the surface like a toxic mist, with the spires of the cities rising like islands in an ocean. Despite its hellish state, Necromunda is considered a very valuable world, due in part to the waste left behind by many generations who have come before. The vast waste heaps, one-time refuse from other industrial processes, have become a source of valuable minerals and other metals no longer naturally present on the stripped world. The population have become scavengers, recycling and reclaiming all that is available to drag a living together on their hellish planet. Most of their food is either synthetic, imported or recycled from human waste or even human bodies, as no real food can be grown or raised in hive cities. Only the truly wealthy can afford the luxury of importing food and other resources to the planet that can no longer be scrounged from its surface. The population of the planet is its true resource. The people can be used to power the planet's industry, and they provide the Imperium with more resources than much of the planet's surface can now provide. To put the population in perspective, there are over 1 billion inhabitants of the Upper Trizor Hive, at least there was 4,000 years ago, but there are undocumented billions, or even tens of billions, living deeper in the hives across Necromunda, all of whom drain the planet dry and keep its heart pumping with their own lives, labour and violence that they inflict on one another. Its capital city is Hive Primus, also known as the Palantine, sharing its name with one of the hills at the centre of Rome. It is one of the largest hives of Necromunda, soaring over 10 miles into the air from the surface and descending nearly 3 miles into the ground, although only about 1 mile of that is inhabited by humans. Its population is in the billions and probably outstrips some other Imperial world's populations by itself. This hive, and the planet itself, is ruled by Lord Garantius Helmore, master of his house and the world overall. However, the other powerful houses are always conspiring to overthrow House Helmore, and the internal politics of Necromunda can be as violent as any conflict on the battlefields of the Imperium. Most other hives and hive clusters usually maintain the names they received in ancient times, as smaller settlements before they grew into the behemoths they are today. However, the locals usually also have their own slang names for their hives, which can help identify locals from any other outsiders to the hive. 
there are approximately a thousand hive clusters on the world, all linked with both overland transport tubes and underground tunnels, the remains of mining and transport networks from ancient times. In the recent history of the world, with the 13th Black Crusade racking the Imperium, the planet has been suffering through unprecedented chaos. There have been vast riots across the planet's surface that the local enforcers and the Arbites have had trouble quelling. The only thing that has brought the rioting to a close was the arrival of Gwilliman and his crusade, quickly putting down the rebellions and using the vast industry of Necromunda to help reinforce his crusade. The society of Necromunda, especially before the riots, could be considered standard for all hive worlds, or at least the majority across the Imperium. No attempt has really been made to enforce the central administration or rulership on the whole of the population, only those most visible or wealthy, for it will be near infeasible considering the total population of the world, especially considering the numbers of unrecorded citizens on the planet. Instead, the population tends to conform to a crude feudal system, where people form into gangs and groups who owe loyalty to one more powerful figure or group, who then owes their loyalty to a more powerful figure or group, and so on. In the more stable areas of the hives, these loyalties are owed by families, with closely related families all remaining close together to form one loyal bond and supporting one another via the rulership of the most powerful member of the group. Those in less affluent areas tend to form around the strong or powerful, regardless of familial relations. This structure is actually quite efficient for regulating the internal politics of the hive, rather than it being a mass of chaos, and self-regulating in most areas of society. Weaker groups seek out and ally with other weaker groups to get stronger or become vassals of stronger groups, while stronger groups gain a power base to maintain order and structure in order to gain more power and wealth. In the lower hive strata, however, resources can be scarce, and power usually lies in the hands of those who can keep those resources. This usually requires coercion and violence. These can lead to feuds with other clans of similar strength, which eventually devolve into outright conflict that can rival some war zones, though most of the time this is restricted to skirmishes and brawls in the streets of the lower hives. These skirmishes and gang wars do serve another purpose rather than just being about the bloodshed and power-mongering amongst the individuals. This is because they are watched by their one-time saviours. The Imperial Fists still recruit from Necromunda, usually arriving once every generation to take the strongest and most useful pre- or recently post-pubescent fighters from the gangs to be initiated into the chapter and become the redoubtable Imperial Fist Space Marines that we all know. So that's everything I wanted to mention on Necromunda today. We will return to Necromunda next time with a look at the gangs of Necromunda, so I hope you return for that, and after that we will go back to our usual schedule looking at chaos. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video today. If you have, leave a comment in the comment section below or send me a private message, especially if you have a question. Otherwise, I hope to see you next time on the Vaults of Terror.